Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to the shop. Uh, since I've had the, the fortune of uh, getting named the uh, village idiot over on Practical Machinists, I've decided since I am an idiot and as such I'm not constrained by what I don't know because what I don't know is everything. Uh, I've been doing some experimental welding and I've had pretty decent success with it on cast iron. So what I'm gonna do is take this outside and take a sledgehammer and bust it in half because I figure this should be a difficult piece to weld since it's round. Uh, once I weld on one side, it's gonna break the other side. So we'll see how that does. Also being a cylinder liner, it's probably malleable iron. So it's similar to what I'm guessing the semi-steel is that they used in the drill press. So I'm gonna smash this up since that's what I'm good at. And uh, I'll bring you back and we'll see if we can put it back together like Humpty Dumpty style. See, so when it comes to breaking things, that's something I've got down. As you can see, that's definitely got that cast irony look to it. So, let's see if we can stick it back together. I'm not going to bother to make it beautiful, but uh, I just want to see if it sticks and I'm going to bust it again and see what it looks like. Typically, I think I'd like to have a groove in that, but I'm going to try it without it anyway because I'm lazy and it's just an experiment. And I think doing what I'm doing, I'm going to be able to burn it in anyway. What I'm doing is running DC straight, which is not what's recommended. Using 718 rods that I broke all the flux off of, which is not recommended, but it's kind of a, a super old school arc welding. I was reading about back when they first started arc welding and they didn't have fluxes and they were running DC straight, burning the impurities out and welding with rods that way of just the parent material. So I said, hey, why not give it a try, right? And I tried it. Welded this piece together. It's some old junk cast. And it actually turned out pretty good. No cracking. Pretty strong. Everybody loves it when I beat on this drill table because it's a precision instrument. Of course, it's got more holes in it than the craters of the moon where it's been drilled on for 75 years, but some people still like to give grief about it. Anyway, let's uh, fire the welder up. I'm using the foot pedal to run the amps, so that's kind of odd too, but uh, I'm liking it. So. So what we're going to go with and see how it works. I think this might really work good in the out of position welding back in the hole because I can really control the heat. I can go on it and off it. Don't get any slag in my welds because there's no such thing as slag because all the flux is gone. So let's hit it see what it gets. Probably saying to yourself, Brian, my five year old will is better than that. They probably do. But uh, it's surprisingly free of porosity, it looks like. A couple spots there. But considering this was rusted, full of oil, and antifreeze, not too bad. I don't hear it breaking. I didn't get full penetration, so I know it's weak in there. Let me try and just V a little slot out. And I'll put some in the hole and see if I can make it all split to hell. Fantastic. Simulated crack destruction here. Let's give it a go.
You have to admit, except for a little undercut right there on the end, it ain't too bad looking. So I'll let this cool off and see if it splits all the hell. And we'll be back. Well, there's the, the gap I filled. Let's get the undercut there on the end, but uh, otherwise looks pretty good. I got no visible cracking. And that was a blind gouge. I don't see any cracking in the weld here in the side. On either side. It's in, nice and ugly, but I wouldn't expect a lot different from welding with no flux. But that's, that does let you get a pretty clean weld. So I'm gonna go outside and let's see about smashing this. And a lot of people weld cast iron together, but I found none of anybody taking it back apart, so. That's what we're gonna do. Just bust this up and take a look. I don't know where my safety squints are, so let's close my eyes. Ain't a bad weld, I guess. Let's hit it where I welded it. That cracked it. Now we got a back part. So maybe you can tell there. That was the original brake line. And it sheared the weld off the outside by pulling it out of the base material, which was the same thing I saw happen on my test bars on the drill. That's the hole I drilled off, or ground through and welded back up. You can see it was splitting on that side where it was welded to the parent material. And then it broke this side, welded to the parent material. There's some inclusions in there where that's busted through. Alright, let's experiment with burning a flux 7018 down the crack now and see what that does. So if we got a better result than a flux one, or no flux. Seeing cracking and the attaching weld. You can see it was warm. You can see where heat come through the inside of that cylinder liner. Yep, let's just take it outside and beat it up, see what happens. Can you see that? 
We'll see how the weld does bend this sucker over, what do you think? Say that's holding okay, let's go So I actually failed some of the parent material or some of the bar in there and then broke out the cast in there. That's pretty typical though. But that was pretty strong. I mean I'm that quarter inch bar bent it all the way over and just about all the way back or broke it. Try and find somebody else doing strength testing on cast iron welds. Good luck. I'm gonna head it right in the middle of this nickel weld, see what happens. Sounds fairly solid. That's the hollow sound, now. All right, let's waylay this thing. Well, here's a fractured out weld nugget. You can see the cast on both sides. Looks like a decent job. Don't see any porosity in the weld really. Clean this off and I want to do the bend brake test on it running the no flux you think bailey you know a better method i'm open to suggestions Apparently better than now. Well, I guess uh, we'll see about bending this bar. That one there's in there good. <sighs> Don't want to come out.
think we'll need another device. So that's the best result I've had as far as holding wise. It's been both ways. Didn't pull out with the sledgehammer. Let's see if we can get it loose that way. Tell you, that's a good weld for cast iron. So. That's damn good. I still haven't broke it. Well, that's probably the best weld I've ever put in cast iron right there. That son of a buck is strong now. It's getting, you can actually it's see it's, it's cracked inside here. It's all busted up. It crack that way, crack that way, crack that way. And it still won't come loose. I think it's gonna rip that whole patch out. It didn't fail the weld. Broke all around the outside of it, but that weld would not give it up. I don't know if you can see it. And see that light color around the weld? It actually improves the grain structure and made it a lot finer in that area where the weld was. So who would have thought, right? The strongest weld I did was using the worst method.
I need to get a hold of a MIG welder and try some stainless and see what kind of results I get. But it's pretty interesting right there. 7018, no shielding. Hot. Melt everything. It ripped a section where that weld was out of that. Hmm. Pretty surprising. I welded that entire drill section on there and it was held as good as that was. I would never worry about it coming back off. Cause that, for an inch of weld there, that took a lot of pounding to get that back loose. I think it, it took less to break the cylinder liner. So, uh, that's all I know so far. It's been some interesting testing. Hopefully y'all enjoy the, the uh, redneck science behind doing these various welds and breaking them back apart and checking them out and seeing what happened and what went wrong. I said I couldn't find anything about that on the internet about welding cast iron. I haven't had any of this actually break in the process of welding. I've always had to break it afterwards. So uh, that's kind of been my experience in the past. I guess I don't weld a lot of real super low grade cast where it just breaks up on its own. Most of what I weld is machinery type stuff and it, I guess it's all higher quality castings. So, but uh, ripping it out of the parent material has always been the case until this last last time with this test with uh, doing it DC straight with no flux and just really lighting it up hard. Uh, and then I say, I mean, it's melted, fused, mixed. It's a, it's a cluster in the weld material, but seems to work okay, so. I said, hopefully I get to try some other stuff and figure out maybe the best, best method of attack uh, before I try and weld up this drill piece and uh, may wind up with a really good result without doing any of the stuff that anybody said need to be done to get it done because most of it's not practical for the expense of this drill. You know, sending it off and having a $10,000 weld job done in an oven with a bunch of high priced rods on a $2,000 drill, that's not practical. So we're trying to do a practical repair here and hopefully uh, what I learned to be something that somebody else can use someday and you can fix something that you've messed up like me. Okay, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing and I'll catch you later.